everyone, welcome back to the attic. After making Chill Rend, I really wanted to make something from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I really wanted to make something that I hadn't seen before though. Everyone has made a Master Sword. I wanted to make something else. I made the Thunder Blade. One thing we are great at is crafting. One thing that we are terrible at is 3D modeling. That's why we decided to partner up with our friend Tony over at Blacksmithing Gamer. Make sure you check out his video in the description below where he makes this thing on a normal timeline. Stay tuned here if you want to see what three months of work looks like. In making children, we learned a lot about model making for molds. So in working on the Thunder Blade, I wanted to avoid all the post-process work and just do this right from the get-go. So I spent a lot of extra time making sure all of the sections where the seams met are sanded very well. Uh, the top has been spray painted with a clear acrylic spray paint, so it's very shiny and very smooth as well as lots and lots and lots of layers of filler primer. The inside I don't care as much about because I want that to be speckled, so I'm actually gonna do a Mod Podge in there to give it a little bit more texture. But I really wanted this top layer to be as shiny and smooth as possible, so that way when we make the mold, we don't need to fight any layer lines or any weird abnormalities from the 3D prints coming together. So next, we're gonna make the mold of this and then we're going to cast it out of a different material. It's called Smooth On Clear Cast 325. It's a plastic rather than a resin, and it's a clear plastic, so we can add pigment powders to it. So we're gonna try that, see how that goes, and then put some electronics in it. So we're just about to pour the plastic into the mold that we made. So before we got to this point, we filled up the mold with water and found out that it has a volume of about 400 milliliters. So that's how we're gonna base how much plastic to mix up. We have the 3D printed piece in the mold currently just to keep its form correct. Um, we're doing that because the mold itself, it's, it's sturdy enough, but if you wiggle it, it's gonna move and actually change shape. So if we start with a, the exact shape from the 3D printed piece, pull that out, pour the mold, it should come out just exactly like this. So the color we're going for is actually this yellow, and Nicole played around for a little bit figuring out how to get this, which we were pretty happy with. Uh, it's actually one part chartreuse, one part citron, and then the three drops of this yellow alcohol ink.
And this is where we are so far. We have the two halves done, the handle part printed, but what we need to figure out now is the actual electronics that are all gonna go into here. Uh, the problem being, we printed this out before we picked out the electronics we were gonna get and the board is not gonna fit. We need to redo this. The intention is to make the Thunder Blade operate just like it does in the game and it actually does the proper light movement like it does in the game and it plays the proper sound that it does in the game. So at this point, Turi's going to try to figure out the electronics, figure out a way for the board to fit into here. Mm -hmm. I will then start sanding these and cleaning them up, getting them ready to accept the lights. We'll see. Don't know yet. We're going to figure it out as we go. did is actually make kind of a makeshift insert. This will act as a channel for the lights to sit within. This will sit on top of here. We're going to glue this together and then once it's all glued together, we're going to bevel the edges so it makes a sharp point across the whole thing. So this is how the NeoPixel LED strips are actually set in the blade. I don't have to address them in each strip individually, I can address them as a single strip. So I just solder the positive voltage, negative voltage, and data line together so that it comes straight from the uh, control board. And then it'll address it all as one strip, so that makes it really easy, there's no extra coding to be done. I put a layer of UV resin on top of basically anywhere that was sanded because it actually hides all of the sand marks and make it makes it look polished again. Just trying to fill in the seam by going up helps make the seam disappear. And I'm basically just going to go up and down the sword with this until it is not tacky to the touch. Usually I do about two minutes per area. 